Hello there, I'm Sand from Inclusive Magic, and in this video I'm going to explain why I think Lucasfilm should make a Star Wars Episode 10. Episode 10? You might be thinking, no thank you, enough is enough, spare me any more of that inane parody of the thing I love. Let me watch Mandalorian in peace and forget those sequels ever happened. Okay, I understand. The sequels were divisive, but here's the thing, people remember endings. If episode 9 had stuck the landing, which I think the leaked Duel of the Fates script could have done, then people would look back at the whole trilogy more fondly. Take the prequels. I liked them, a lot of people didn't, but Revenge of the Sith warmed people to them because it took the conflict of the previous movies and channeled them into a clear turning point and it made the whole journey feel worth it. The Rise of Skywalker doesn't make the sequel's journey feel worth it. It feels like a bad aftertaste, and an unnecessary one because the saga previously had a fantastic ending. It feels like somebody burnt the crust of a pizza that was otherwise really tasty. Maybe the sequels will come to be more appreciated with time, as the prequels were. I'm not sure. The prequels were clunky, but they told a compelling story. They were driven by a clear vision, and they added to the philosophical depth of Star Wars. There isn't any of that vision or heft in the sequels, apart from maybe The Last Jedi. So why is the solution to have more of this? Well, like I said, people remember endings. All those bad feelings go away if the last chapter crystallizes the potential of the previous movies into something satisfying. They rushed the sequel trilogy, but with some time to reflect, we can see how to tie these movies into the themes and feelings that make Star Wars so meaningful to us all. So what I propose is Star Wars Episode 10 in 2025, the 10th anniversary of The Force Awakens and the 20th anniversary of Revenge of the Sith. We'll have had some time away from the sequels by then, and we'll have enjoyed some new and inventive forms of Star Wars on Disney+. And so we'll be receptive to a movie that looks to pay off this journey that we've been on since Disney bought Lucasfilm. I'm going to talk about four benefits of an Episode 10. Firstly, it can bring a sense of true finality to the Skywalker saga. This trilogy ended with the hero defeating Palpatine. That's also how the last trilogy ended. So what was different this time? Only that more Jedi were dead, and the hero was the granddaughter of the Batty. In Return of the Jedi, Luke also won a greater victory for the Jedi way. That was undone by this trilogy. So if it ended with pretty much the same beat, what was the point of this trilogy apart from having some likeable but underdeveloped new faces? If George Lucas had made his sequel trilogy, it would have been about building something new. That's what was next for our heroes, you know, building a new Republic and a new Jedi Order. They've already failed at that before The Force Awakens begins, and so we're back to Rebels vs. Empire again. We don't see the new heroes start to build anything because Episode Nine ends so abruptly. It's also not clear from these movies how the new heroes are any more qualified to do better than Luke, Leia, or Han. So let episode 10 be about that. Take a cue from Lego Star Wars and let Rey and Finn figure out a new Jedi Order. Let's see a galaxy that's had two brushes with authoritarianism chart a way through anarchy to enduring peace and freedom. Then the sequels will feel like they were worth it. A tenth movie can unify the trilogies in a way that The Rise of Skywalker couldn't. Episode 9 was battling against several pressures, some real, some self-inflicted. The tragic loss of Carrie Fisher was real, it was devastating. How did you salvage a movie that was meant to put her front and centre without this amazing person who was really the heart of Star Wars? Of all the options they had, recast, have her die off screen, none of these were great. And I give the filmmakers tremendous credit for the solution that they came up with, that really made Leia the heart of the film. Episode 9 also had to close out the conflict of the sequel trilogy. We can debate whether The Last Jedi set it up to do that. I think it did. Duel of the Fates demonstrates that. But The Rise of Skywalker is the product of second guessing and confusion. Nonetheless, Episode 9 tried to conclude the sequel story and pay tribute to Carrie. Now a tenth movie has more freedom to transcend the trilogies and synthesize them into what the saga is truly about. Episode 10 can give the sequel trilogies arcs that they deserve. John Boyega has been pretty vocal that Finn wasn't done justice, particularly in 8 and 9. He shows so much potential in The Force Awakens, 
and he does have an arc in The Last Jedi, but it kind of overlaps with Seven. He's wasted in Nine. Duel of the Fates showed him becoming a leader. Well, let's have Episode Ten allow him to do that, and let's have him be a Jedi and come into conflict with Rey about the Force. And Rey, well, Daisy Ridley says she feels like there's nothing more her character could do. Really? The character was never challenged in the sense of having to make a hard moral choice like Anakin or Luke. Sure, she finds out she's the granddaughter of evil, but this never really creates any credible temptation for her. We know she's going to be good. The only time she's really challenged is when Ben negs her, belittles her, and then asks her to join him. She accomplishes great feats, force healing, channeling all the Jedi, but we don't see her work towards these so they don't feel satisfying. In episode 10, let her be the leader of a fledgling new Jedi Order. She can have a few putter ones, like Broom Boy. And she is facing the same questions that her predecessors faced. And if she finds new answers that eluded even Luke, she could be the greatest Star Wars hero of all. And then there's Ben Solo. The Last Jedi set him up to be the sole villain. Rise of Skywalker walked that back, redeemed him, and then killed him. Maybe he's not dead? He didn't appear as a Force ghost. Bring him back and have him go on a journey like Jason Solo, where everything gets stripped away until he understands the Force on a totally new level. Have him reconcile with Luke, and maybe he goes on to live a penitent life as a moisture farmer. Well then who's the villain? Let's take a leaf out of George Lucas's book and have not another empire, but a cabal of criminals and pirates. If the empire was about crushing chaos with order, and the Republic is about freedom, but it's weak. There's your conflict. Can you have order and freedom? And let's have Darth Plagueis, y'all. Perhaps that is who Snoke was originally intended to be. Doesn't it make sense that Sidious would use clones of his dead master who he murdered? It would be so satisfying to have this Sith of legend be in the finale of Star Wars. There's got to be a way to revisit Plagueis. If you've read Matt Stover's short story, The Tenebrous Way, you'll see how life uh, finds a way. And here's the thing. Star Wars fans love when elements from different eras tie together thematically. It's like poetry, so sort of they rhyme. The Mandalorian shows that even midichlorians can be repurposed in a way that starts to sound vaguely interesting. And it shows that there's a pretty strong contingent of fans out there who love the prequels and all the ideas that they introduced. By the time 2025 comes around, we'll have had five years where Star Wars was mostly driven by Disney Plus shows and books. They're blending ideas from the three trilogies, and exciting filmmakers are being given freedom to tell inventive stories in the galaxy far, far away. Episode 10 can bring that into the saga world and pay off the Skywalker movies with a film that feels like, okay, yeah, awesome, that is the zenith of Star Wars. Can one film do all of that? set up new villains, new stakes, and pay them off in a way that doesn't feel rushed? If you've seen Toy Story 4, you'll see that the answer is yes. Toy Story 3 felt like the perfect ending, and then Pixar went and made a fourth movie, a coda, that felt like it really belonged. I don't have the appetite for a whole another trilogy with the sequel characters, but if you give us one movie where we have a truly rewarding experience with them, we'll look back at the trilogy more fondly and we'll be excited about the future of Star Wars. I have a pitch for Star Wars Episode 10, but that's for another video. In the meantime, let me know what you think about the idea of Episode 10 in the comments, and if you've enjoyed this video, hit like and subscribe. Check out my other Star Wars videos, including how to make a lightsaber. Until next time, stay safe, and keep sharing your magic.